When it comes to a classic steak sauce, store-bought sauces have their place, just not in my kitchen. Stick around for a couple secret ingredients for a classic steak sauce you'll never forget. Now, if you're like me, you grew up with a bottle of A1 on the drawer of your refrigerator. Standard, right? Standard fare. To make a classic steak sauce like this in your home kitchen, there are a few standard ingredients to do a cheater A1. Uh, most recipes you're gonna see uh, some kind of tomato component, in this case, tomato paste. You'll see a couple vinegars. You'll see some form of mustard. In our case, we're gonna use Dijon. A lot of times you're gonna see golden raisins or some kind of raisin. We're not gonna use raisins. A raisin is a dehydrated grape, right? I don't think it should try to become a grape again and get rehydrated. That's just a personal thing. So let's get started on the sauce and stick around for the two ingredients you won't want to miss. Starting with an onion component is always a great foundation for a sauce. We'll start building our sauce by mincing a shallot. And into a saucepan over a medium heat, we'll put in a tablespoon of butter to give the shallot a chance to saute and become transparent. We'll build the flavor by adding a tomato paste and give it a chance to simmer. Now while that's going, let's get our liquids ready to go in. We got water, sherry vinegar, apple cider vinegar, and Worcestershire. We'll bring that to a simmer and make sure the tomato paste is incorporated. Then add our Dijon and our first secret ingredient, tamarind paste. This will give subtle, sour, and sweet notes to our sauce. And finally, our second secret ingredient, dates. The fiber of dates will give our sauce some structure while the sweet caramel and earthy flavors balance our vinegars perfectly. Make sure the pits are removed and then we've got about a half cup and a nice little fine dice that'll head into the saucepan for simmering. Cover and simmer on low for about 10 minutes. From here we'll blend it. You can use a hand immersion blender or a stand-up blender like this. Quick tip here. If you're ever blending a hot liquid, be sure to remove the filler cap to let steam escape. Super important. Otherwise, you can have a sauce explosion in the kitchen and nobody wants that. With the lid secure, we'll blend until smooth. Bottle it up to have your classic steak sauce on hand. High quality steaks like this deserve ingredients that are high quality also. That's why we made our own classic steak sauce. Let's season these up and get them in the pan. I was able to score some great looking certified Angus beef brand T-bones, but feel free to grab whichever steaks you prefer, like ribeyes, strips, or fillets. Generous salt and pepper on both sides, and then on the grill we go. You know, we can't always grill outside, so here's a great alternative, a grill pan. Preheat the pan so you can get a great sear. Give a couple minutes on one side, and look for beads of moisture on the shoulders of the steak as it starts to relax. These are good indicators that it's ready to flip. A couple minutes and check for doneness. For me, I'll pull it about 120 to 125 degrees so it ends up at medium rare for my target. Pick your target with a handy doneness chart here. Pull your steaks and let them rest for about five minutes before diving in. The T-bones are cool because they've got a strip steak on one side and just a little filet on the other. I'm a big fan of the strip steak, so I'm going to take a bite here and can't wait to pair with this sauce. So good. The sauce has got such great balance. When you have a quality steak like this, you need something that can pair well with that kind of marbling. That kind of robust flavor needs something tangy. Ah, oh, the tang is perfect, the earthiness. It is the perfect sauce to go with perfect steaks. Make sure you like and subscribe to our videos and we'll see you next time in the test kitchen.